In this video we're going to look at typical analysis of variance. So here we're going to do a one-way ANOVA where we have a single treatment with three different levels and a single outcome variable to go with it. Now here we have the data for vaccines for cattle and here we've got different weight gains for a different number of animals here. Notice that in a one-way ANOVA we can have uneven group sizes which is less straightforward in a two-way ANOVA. For GenStat we need everything in columns, so I could have had a column of A, B and C, but actually I have a factor column listing what the vaccine is, and then this outcome variable, the weight gain column next to it. Now that could be followed up by lots of other variable columns which could go with that single factor column, which makes life easier for presenting data. Before I take it to GenStat I want to take the factor column and tell GenStat that it is indeed a factor column, by putting an exclamation mark after the column title. There we go. So here I'm going to press Control and Shift and right and down to select all my data. I'm going to copy that and then take it through to GenStat. So as always, spread new from clipboard. And there's my data here. Before we do anything with the analysis of variance, we need to set up GenStat properly. Uh, and for reasons which are complicated, they have turned off a particular facility that you'll find useful. So the first thing to do is go to Tools, Options, and the Menus tab. And in here, we'll find a tick box for Show Multiple Comparisons on the ANOVA menu. We're going to use that today, so there must be a tick in that box before we start. To put a tick in that box, you should only have to do this once on your own PC, and press OK. Right, onto the analysis of variance. We have our data here. We're going to stats. Analysis of variance has its own entry on the list. One and two way analysis of variance at the top. So we choose that one. We're doing a one way analysis of variance. That means we've only have one factor to work with at the moment. And the variance is the weight gain and the treatments of the three different vaccines. Okay, we're going to the options, have a look what's in there. All that's fine, we don't need anything else. So press OK. We can run that. And there we have our three means 5.5489, 4.9813, and 4.7620. Now, are they different from each other? The F probability is our p value for the ANOVA. And at 0.047, it beats our 0.05 threshold for significance. So yes, there is a significant difference between A, B and C. The only confidence we can have in that is that A is different from C, A being largest and C is the smallest. But we don't know about B. We don't know if B is different from A as well, or if B is different from C. To do that, we have to do what's known as a post hoc test. The post hoc test comes with different flavours and it's on this menu. So we go back to the menu, we can either go through the stats menu again or double click here to go back to where we're. And this time further output is no longer grayed, so we click further output and here is the multiple comparisons button and we didn't see that before. So we click multiple comparisons and here we have a range of options here. We want to do a multiple comparison. We click there and we have a whole list of different types. Our significance level is 0.05. Now, we have Fisher's unprotected LSD is probably what um, Dr. Chikunya taught you about in class, or Dr. Slematis. But here, we have a Chuki test and a Bonferroni test, which are all fairly standard. We're going to use a Chuki test to look at the post hoc. And we're going for means with letters. We're going to press OK, and then run. And if we have a look at the bottom of our output, here, is the answer to our questions whether A, B and C are different from each other. So here it's ranked it in um, lowest to highest, so C, B, A. And letters um, means with the same superscript are not significantly different. Letters with different superscripts are significantly different. So here 4.76 and 4.98 share the same superscript A. So they are not significantly different from each other. 4.981 and 5.549 share a B, so they are not significantly different from each other. However, C and A 
have completely different superscripts, so they are significantly different from each other. Okay, so let's take all that and copy it into Excel. Right click, copy, back to Excel, right click, paste. So there's our results, including some code that we don't need. So let's get rid of that. Bye bye. Boom. Um, get rid of these rows so we can look at it all properly. And there's our printout. So I need to produce a graph. And our graph is fairly straightforward. I'm going to use the three means for A, B, and C. And in this case, because we had an uneven number of groups, remember up here, we've got different number of animals in each row. It means that I have a different number of standard error of differences. So I'm going to choose the average one as a suitable measure. So on my graph, I'm simply going to present the three means and a single error bar for all three. So I'll make a graph magically appear in a moment. So here is my nicely formatted graph showing the three means indicated here and the sting single standard error of difference for all of the error bars, which is absolutely fine. Okay, what we're missing is this information down here. So how do we put that on there? Well, there's no simpler way than to just put a text box in there. So insert text box, and you put a text box here, and A and C are different from each other, and B is the same. Now it doesn't matter if we put a, a superscript A and B for the different treatments, or the other way around. So I'm going to, because this is the first column, I'm going to give that a score A, just in a nice text box, and I'm going to make sure that line there's no line around the text box by formatting it. So I just have a single A there. I might want to make that slightly larger so we can see it nice and clearly. And perhaps I could make it red to, so it stands out. So I have a text box there. I might copy it and paste another one over there. And this one. It's going to instead of being A, it's going to be B. And then I might paste another one. Oh, it's one down there. And this one is not different from either side, so A, B is the answer there. Okay. So I'm not handing in an Excel thesis, I'm handing in a Word thesis. So let's take that across to Word. So I've cro oh, B, uh, mm. So I've copied it all into Word, and I've got my superscripts come across with me. Um, I've noticed that although my thesis is going to be in Times New Roman, which is actually easier to read, my graph is in Arial, which is the Excel default. Let's change that. If I just click the graph, so I don't want this inner part selected, I just want to select outside, so the whole outside is selected. It's got Arial in the box. Instead of scrolling all the way down to Times New Roman, I can just type Times and then press Return. And then everything's changed to the right font. So that's nice too. I've got a nice complete title here, Figure 1. The weight gain of cattle given the different vaccine treatments. A mean and standard error of difference is shown. And here, A, A and B is indicated here. So A and B, the different letters indicate a Chuki post hoc test significant difference of P is less than 0 0.05. So that's the complete package. Everything's there. If I wanted a table of the same data, here's the table format. So again, I have my only three horizontal lines on the table, above and below the title and at the bottom. And I have three columns for my vaccines. And I've put an N equals there, which gives me some extra. I could have put that on the um, axis title above, but didn't. But it's nice information to have. And I have the means. I have the standard error of difference here. Notice how I've got it in short here. And then I have the all-important footnote underneath, standard error of difference there. I also have the A and B superscripts added. A, A, B, 
and B to show my significant differences within the treatment as well as my overall analysis of variance p-value here. So that's my table or a graph. Remember, one or the other. And that's your analysis of variance. Thank you for watching.